I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to with the line opening is getting out of my car. I wouldn't have to walk as far to get the train to go to Glasgow. I'll be on the train because I prefer the train to the buses. To be able to just jump on the train as a whole family, uh, it's going to be really beneficial to us. My name is Matt Birch and I'm a music teacher at Caldervale High School. I commute each day. I leave Edinburgh at about 10 to 7 in the morning. It takes me about 50 minutes to get here along the M8. But the morning commute isn't the worst one. The worst one is the uh, evening commute. If I leave after 4 o'clock, it has taken me three and a half hours to get back before with the traffic. If there's a hold up on the M8, and if you've planned to go out for a meal or if you've planned to meet up with friends at the end of the day, if you're not getting back until half past seven at night, you know, you've missed your appointments. When the line opens, it'll have a fantastic effect on time. I much prefer the idea of getting on the train. I much prefer the idea of being able to do some work on the way in. And I could just have a much more relaxed way to arrive at school in the morning. I could be a much more effective teacher, I think, so I'll be much more relaxed when I arrive at school. And I'll know for sure exactly what time I'm going to be getting home as well. So I'll be able to plan my private life much more accurately and be able to do more things uh, once I get home. It goes back to 2002, there was a study done looking at congestion issues between Edinburgh and Glasgow across the sort of central belt of Scotland. One of the findings or the recommendations that came out of that study was to reopen this railway because it would bring benefits in terms of speedier journeys between the two cities, it would help to reduce congestion on the main M8 and it'll help to open up some of these communities to you know, wider transport links. The project is costed at £300 million, funded by Transport Scotland and Network Rail are, are very pleased to be in a position where we're delivering it. We've had tremendous levels of support from the local MSPs, from the local MPs, who have all been very positive about the project going forward. <laughs> and parliamentary process went forward really quite rapidly and was completed in 2006. A clear indication of the consensus of how important the reopening this line was for everyone. To be rebuilding railways is rare, there's no question of it, and it's great to see it happening. Reinstating this line will restore many of the benefits that people had 50 or so years ago. I live in close proximity to the railway line. Certainly a great opportunity to take the kids away, to be able to just jump on the train as a whole family. Uh, it's going to be really beneficial to us. Both of us work for West Lothian Council. I work in social work department and my husband, he works for criminal justice at Livingston Social Work. At the moment, there's a lot of training opportunities and sometimes you just think it's, you know, it's having to go and get, take the car into like Glasgow or even further. You know, you have to plan ahead where you're going to park, are there any parking facilities? So I think having the train there is going to be a better, opportunity for the training, for you applying for the training, um, because it would be easier and quicker to get to. We're laying over 50 kilometres of new track. Over 100 kilometres of new overhead line equipment. A lot of the old original railway had been removed, it had been bulldozed away. Parts of it had been converted into a cycle track. So we've had to do a lot of bridge reconstruction, a lot of earthworks, new drainage so that the formation of the railway is adequately drained. And we've actually had to build quite a lot of new roads as well, which is maybe unusual for a railway project. But to avoid some of the old level crossings that we had in the railway, we've actually built new roads to provide access to avoid people having to cross over the railway. Major civil engineering work, major railway work, so a lot of effort going in to deliver this project.
One of the things that we were asked to take on board was a thing called a code of construction practice in terms of how long during the day we could work, the noise levels, any sort of vibration issues, how we should deal with neighbours, how we should deal with environmental issues as well. The Scottish Natural Heritage and Network Rail have worked on the project together from the beginning. Up to this point, there has been quite a lot of disruption, not only for communities, but also for the natural heritage. You know, we've had badgers moved in and out of their homes. There's been very good communication between SNH and others involved in the project, so we've been able to deal with things very quickly. If people know when we're going to be working and what they're going to be doing, they tend to be much more understanding. And I think we've been successful. All the feedback we've had from the stakeholders and our neighbours are that they're very pleased with the way we've handled the, the approach to that. My name's Kayleigh. My current situation is I live in Armadale and I'm going to be commuting to Glasgow Caledonian University. I also work in Edinburgh. The commuting that I do at the moment is an absolute nightmare. I've got to take my car to places, I've got to park the car up and then take the train to either Edinburgh or Glasgow, depending on where I want to go. The reason I chose Glasgow Caledonian was because I knew this new rail link was going to come in and it's an easy commute. It's going to be a lot easier for me to move from Armadale to Glasgow and back. So that was a big impact on why I chose to study there. We know that investment in transport infrastructure is a key ingredient in growing the country's economy. Rail infrastructure investment is hugely important, so the Airdrie Bathgate reopening is going to bring enormous economic benefits to Scotland. There will be huge benefits for local people in terms of accessing jobs and taking trips for leisure or, or recreation purposes. The benefits of this new line are jobs, access to education, more park and ride facilities, less congestion on the motorways, all environmental gains, all economic gains. It's a win-win for the local communities. Well, I'm hopeful that it's going to be a positive advantage which will attract companies to come and locate um, in this part of um, Scotland because we'll have good transport links. The new main rail link gives a great opportunity for customers who have previously not had the opportunity to use rail. This will get people out of their cars on the M8 and other roads in central Scotland into a more sustainable mode of transport. We'll now get an opportunity for people from West Lothian to come to Glasgow and from North Lanarkshire to go direct to Edinburgh. It is about making sure that East and West can connect, but more importantly, I think for the economy of Scotland, it opens up West Lothian and Lanarkshire to the rest of Scotland, and I think that's the strength of the Basket Airdrie Line. My name's Elaine Clark. I run my own recruitment agency based in Bathgate. The rail link, I think it'll make a huge difference to Bathgate. More businesses will locate to Bathgate and surrounding area which means more jobs, which is positive for me. I've got good news for you. One of my clients, they're a major building society. They have branches throughout Scotland. If I'm recruiting in Edinburgh, it's easy to get local people to jump on the train and go to work. If it's Glasgow, I'm struggling. People just don't want that long commute on the M8. Yeah, good, good. Now the Glasgow link is due to open, candidates will find it much easier to travel into Glasgow for work. It's exciting times for Bathgate. I think more businesses are going to come here. There's going to be new jobs. I'm a recruitment consultant and I'm going to seize the opportunities. The Network Rail team and indeed all our contractors are immensely proud of what we've achieved so far. It does your heart a power of good to see some rails going down and it actually beginning to look like a railway. Three and a half years for a project like this size is a, is a remarkable achievement. The collaboration between the Scottish Government and Network Rail has worked very effectively indeed. They've delivered the project on time, they've delivered it to budget. Um, and, you know, they've done a great job. The communities, the government, the whole of Scotland is very grateful for the work that's been done. We are absolutely confident that our first passenger train will be travelling along here on the 12th of December, 2010. <laughs>
is a momentous day. We've campaigned for the last 11 years for the line to reopen and I genuinely believe it's going to transform people's lives. I think we all saw it as a dream but it's one that's being realised today and I think it's really important for all the people living along the line. This is a historical occasion isn't it? This is superb. To be on the first passenger train is really special. And we thought it was going to be held back as well with the weather, but mm -hmm. so that was great, that wasn't it? We've seen not just people who wanted to go on the first journey, but one or two people have actually wanted to use the train, which, considering how early we were in the morning, it is, is fantastic to see. And I've got a ticket in my pocket that says Blackridge Station on it, so I'll keep that forever.